All right, good morning. How is everybody? Good to see you guys. Good morning. Can you hear me? All right. Welcome Beth, Sarah, Katie. Great to see you guys. We'll see if anybody else drops in here. All right, you guys ready for the last lecture? <laughs> Sarah's ready. Sick, but ready. Oh, you're sick. Yeah, uh, I've been trying to get that week three assignment in. You know, I was like, well, I better watch the live lecture for this one so I know what to do, you know, and then go back and watch the other lecture to make sure I know exactly how to do it, you know. Yeah. Well, but, the good news is we don't have too much to go over today, so a lot of it was yesterday's lecture. All right. So it's pretty packed full of information, but yeah. Um, but yeah, we just have to go over some some simple things today. But we got uh, sick too on top of me being sick. I'm sorry. I said we got a three year old and uh, a seven year old getting sick. I think even the five year olds getting sick. So. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yeah, it's the change in the weather. Yep. Yeah, my daughter had it. She gave it to me, and then now I have it, and then I have it again. <laughs> it's like. Yeah. Back it's back and forth yep that's just uh one of those things but yeah. hopefully we'll be okay for the holidays right so let's get this yeah. to go through its stages and we'll be good for the holidays but i think <coughs> we're outside today in a little bit because it's supposed to get a little warm you know like in the 60s mm. maybe getting her outside in that fresh air will help her yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's actually not too bad here either, but it's not 60s. It's 43 here. But um, I'll take that over, you know, zero degrees <laughs> any day. Yeah, any day. <laughs> I hate the cold. He always makes fun of me because I'll wear a hoodie in the summer if I'm cold. That's funny. Yeah, um, you know, I lived in Tampa for eight, seven years, and I moved yeah. back up here, and it was uh, definitely a change. <laughs> yeah. I'm from Pittsburgh, but... Uh, uh, you know, when you when you live in the South, your your blood gets kind of used yeah, to that. You know? What's that? I'm from St. Louis. Okay. And this cold and that cold are like two do totally different colds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the blood gets thin for sure. You know, I never really thought about it until it actually happened. I was like, oh, yeah. Like when it was 50 degrees down there, it was cold. I was wearing big hoodie jackets and everybody was laughing at me. But you get used to the, you know, I, it's so funny because I was on Facebook the other day and I saw a memory when I did live in Florida. And it was uh, this time last year, my thermostat, I had to take a picture of it. It said 84 degrees. Yeah. And I thought that was, you know, pretty cool, you know, pretty decent because I'm so used to the 100 degree, 100, you know, with the, the humidity. So like 84 in the house was like pretty decent but now I'd be like <laughs> it'd, it'd be totally different so straight up freezes me out yeah um, and you'll wear shorts during the winter yep How can you do that yep shorts in the winter flip-flops looking at it when we're outside <laughs> I'm all bundled up I'm like uh-uh nope I'm staying nice and warm and a good trick to staying warm before you go outside in the cold is take a nice hot bath and soak in it yeah, there you go. Get those bones warm. So Beth lived in Myrtle Beach for three years. It gets it gets pretty cold down there. Mm -hmm. It can get pretty cold. Yep. Texas. Yep. Yeah, it's all snuggled up in my lap sleeping. Yep, Katie, you're in Texas. So you know, it's so funny when I lived in Florida, I was there was no true holidays. It always felt all you know, there was two seasons, a dry and a wet season down in Florida. Yeah, you know, I walk into Target the one day I had flip flops and shorts on, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, it's Christmas." Yeah. I totally forgot. <laughs> Let me tell you, I didn't miss the snow, but <laughs> I kind of missed the snow a little bit. I didn't like it, but I do miss it. You know, at least at Christmas. Well, I was fortunate enough to be able to come back home for two weeks for Christmas when I lived down in Florida, so I was able to to come up and enjoy whatever, and then say, "See ya." Yeah. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> yeah. 
Because after December and after Christmas and after the holidays, you know, it's it's just another three or four months of uh, yuckiness. So yeah. and it's, it's like nothing to look forward to. Yeah. But. Well, I got my son's birthday to look forward to. He's a leap year baby. Oh, okay. There you go. So that's good. Yeah, my daughter's is in April, so it's like spring and her birthday and everything comes all at once. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Well, hopefully, um, you know, it's weird because up here in Pittsburgh, three or four years ago, we had our windows open during Christmas. I'll never forget. So sometimes we get those weird shifts in the weather up here, too. Yeah. But that's that, why we're basic. It's that darn global warming stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, that could be debated, right? <laughs> Either way. But uh, yeah, it's just, um, you know, try to stay warm, everybody, and try to stay, like, healthy as much as you can. Yeah. And, uh, we're, we're getting there to the holidays, so just uh, we'll have some yeah, time yeah. to relax. Wrapping up and graduating in April, as long as I can hold on for their last little bit. <laughs> and then I'm going to reapply or re-register and go and get my bachelor's, so. There you go. Future goals. I love it. Good for you. Yeah, uh, Mother Nature has forgotten her true seasons. I think it's shifting for sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just crazy. All right, guys. Well, welcome to week four. This is the last live lecture. And like I said, we're going to be... Um, we're going to be just kind of going over the last bit of information here for what you need to know for your assessment for. It should go somewhat quick. And um, I'll, I'll kind of open up the rest of the session if you guys need to share any of your work uh, or have any other questions, want me to go over anything over again. We'll, we'll have uh, hopefully a great amount of time to do that. So, you know, before we get to that time, if you want to prep your files, if you want to show anything. Aw, I know, it goes so fast, doesn't it? These courses, the four weeks is, I always say I want to, uh, it would be nice if I had two more weeks, you know, so, but, you know, I guess it's an advantage for you guys to get out of here sooner so you can get going on with your goals and your life. Blink of an eye. Yep. So, yeah, I'll miss you guys too. But you know what? I might see you in the future classes, hopefully. Um, if not, I will post my information uh, at the end of this class so you guys can keep in touch with me as well. I'm also on Facebook. Um, my professional page. If you want to check me out, first and last name, uh, we can connect there if we haven't already. So, all right. All right. So the last time we met up, yeah, the last time we met up, we just went over your learning objectives, we went over your discussion, we went over your four, uh, week four assignment, and I did a demo on that. So if you missed it, that's packed full of information. A lot of you guys, um, you know, we went over, I think, even a half hour of the lecture, which is fine. And it was a lot of information. So definitely, you know, if you missed that, yeah, a lot of you guys need to go back and, and review it again and again, just in case, too, even if you were there live, um, just to kind of get the idea of how this should all come together. I think once you get started, though, it's not as overwhelming as it seems. So, um, you know, just take it one time, one step at a time. And like I said, just keep organized with your, with your files, and I'm sure everything will go smoothly. Okay, so week four, yes, it will just flow. You just have to keep remembering, you know, the, the parts that need to be submitted. So assignment four, you are to create, and I had some confusion on this. Um, I had somebody email me about this too. Um, there's two different parts to this. So assignment four, uh, we went over yesterday, you are to submit really a total of eight page a PDF. And in that eight page PDF, four of those pages is your flat screen design. So it's kind of how you would see it without being in a mock-up. So just a flat screen, you know, the size that it is. So those are the four flat screens that need to be shown. And then the next four pages in that same PDF should be what it looks like in your mock-up. And again, I showed how to do this every step along, along the way, how to save out, how to place in, and how to combine your PDF. So if you have any questions, I went over that yesterday. 
So assessment four is pretty much just your presentation of your in interface, interactive interface. So it's more of like how you would present this to a client so that they can see both the flat screen and the mock-up together. And what's nice about this is it gives you a template in the actual assessment to go off of if you need it. And once you're done doing your steps for assignment four, you should have everything that you need for assessment four. So, you know, that's kind of like the nice part. So if you have everything exported out correctly and everything looks good, um, assessment four should pretty much go smoothly. Um, and then the other part that I want to go over after we go over ass assessment four, which we didn't quite get to yesterday, was um, the last part of assignment four, which was uploading to your Behance. I just wanted to quickly show you um, the steps just in case anybody had any questions with that. Okay, so for assessment four, we're going to be presenting an interactive interface. You're going to follow the outline for your presentation. This is also provided in your in Canvas. So you're going to do a title and mock-up of kiosk with welcome screen. That's page one. Page two is a presentation of your screens with interactive buttons include sidebar, footer text explains the screen and its use. You can use the same text from your assignment presentation. And then once you're done with that, save your file as an interactive PDF. All right, so I'm going to go right into the, the um, actual Canvas instructions here so that we can kind of parallel that information from that slide here. Okay, so this is assessment four. Read through your, um, your learning objectives and the background information. Just talks about how the presentation, how important it is, um, and the interactive features within it. All right, so I'll go right to the prompt here. It says, for your final assignment, you will take advantage of the button features in InDesign to create an interactive PDF prototype of your inter interface design for, present for a presentation. You're gonna place your screen designs in InDesign and use the button function to display the interactive features of your design. See this week's course media for demos of how to apply the button feature. Okay, so um, assignment instructions. Follow this outline for your presentation. Page one, title and mock-up of kiosk with welcome screen. Two, like I just said, presentation of your screens with interactive buttons. Include sidebar for your text. Um, save your files interactive PDF. That's the important part too, because if it's not interactive, it won't be interactive. Um, all right, so uh, we're going to name your file as such. So, you know, obviously that's stated there. And then you're going to submit a multi page interactive PDF with a requirement required components for grading. Exactly. Yep. So let's go ahead and get started here. If you click on um, course, media dem course media demo buttons, I think this is what they're referring to down here. I think it was in week four. Yes. Uh, we just went over this yesterday too. I think it's at the bottom. Understanding buttons right here. Yep, creating buttons. Okay, so you know you might want to kind of review that, um, showing interactive PDFs, how to create them, examples in, of interactive options, and creating buttons is um, that's where you can find that information right there. Okay, so let me go back to assignment. Let me go back to the assessment here real quick. Any questions while I'm kind of reviewing this? Okay, let me go back to your assignment four here. <coughs> oh, okay. All right, I went back here because um, home screen on the kiosk. Okay, um, so on this part here, create the screens of Photoshop and the other screens. Okay, keep my eye here. Save screen step file. Use the provided InDesign template download here and mock up the home screen on the kiosk. <laughs> All 
Okay. So basically, if you want to, you could just download this here. So this is in the assignment four section area. Um, this is, if you want to use the template, let me open this up so you can see it here. If you don't want to use this, this is fine, but I just wanted to show you real quick what this is, uh, what this looks like. So this is an assignment four. Now, let me, let me kind of go over something too. Um, I know some of you guys had questions about this because um, yesterday when I went over, I showed you how to present this um, with four screens separate and then mock up separate. If you want to do this as well, you know, obviously this is provided in here, you can do that as well. So you don't have to do um, like one flat screen per page. If you wanted to do both, you know, showing both on one page, you can do that as well and use this mock up. Okay. So the only thing is, is if you're not using this uh, actual mock up, you can just get rid of it. And then, you know, kind of rearrange your elements and place your other interactive screen in here if you want to do that. If you want to use this screen and this kiosk, that's fine too. I'll show you how to fit that in there. But um, it doesn't have to look, remember how I showed you yesterday? Let me open up my file from yesterday. If I can just oh, hide this for a second here, hold on. Mm -hmm. I saved that whole um, scenario. I'm not sure if I did. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I didn't save them all as one. Um, but I showed you in, in the actual lecture yesterday, you know, showing each an individual page. So that would be um, the first page, location map would be the second one. And then it would be search screen and then search results, okay. Oh wait, this is the mock-up. Hold on a second. Search screen and then search results. There we go. Okay, so I showed you how to combine these together. So you would have a home screen, location map screen, and this is kind of how it would flip through. And then added on to that, in that same PDF, I showed you how to do, um, kind of add in your, your mock-ups. But if you want to, you could do it all in one too, okay? So if that's confusing to you, oh, I see somebody sharing there. Hello. <laughs> if you want to too, you can use this um, presentation too. That might be kind of easier, um, especially because it's only four pages and not eight. And then you can use this for your Behance as well. Does that make sense, you guys? So you can either do it individually or you can use this. Um, hide this out, okay. If you use this, it's really, really easy. You would just do exactly what I showed you yesterday. The only difference being is you would um, title your page. So you might do, and I think I have this in here already, interactive target kiosk. If you're doing target, you could reset the type to make it look nice and, and professional. Okay, D D Diane, I'm glad I answered your question. Sorry to be confusing. Um, I just wanted to make sure we were clear on the template and what that was there for. You can use that. Place your logo in there and then have your name in there. Then the second page, you already kind of saved out your files, remember from yesterday? So all you would need to do is go file place, Go find the file that you saved um, on your desktop or wherever you saved it. I saved it on my desktop. We saved out JPEGs and we saved, saved out PDFs and we saved out ping files. I'm just gonna go ahead and place my PDF in there. And working files, yep. Mm -hmm. But you could just, you know, 
placed in your uh, PDF files fine. And um, then if you're using, you know, if you're not using uh, this kiosk, I'll show you what you can do. But if you're using this kiosk, I'll also show you what you can do. There's a little screen in here. Let me zoom in. <laughs> now this screen can be altered. It looks like it's a little wonky here. Um, you could take your direct selection tool, which is your white arrow. And all this is, is a shape in here, really. You can take your direct selection tool and you can actually bend this to be, you know, kind of a little bit more accurate here. This is just being a little picky. But um, we'll pull this in a little bit more so it has like a... Looks like it's set in there. Okay. And then just take your selection tool and do a command D or file place, and you can place your home screen in there. Okay. Same thing for here. Um, this page would be your location maps PDF. So you would just place in that PDF in there. And um, just as, you know, I'm not gonna alter this shape, but I just wanted to show you how you would do that. Ungroup it so you can select just this shape. Command D is file place. Look for that same PDF that you just placed in for your flat screen and go ahead and place that in there. So that's kind of like the old school method of placing into a, a, a it's not a PSD mock-up, but it's a mock-up. It's the old school way to do it. Okay, file place. Um, this would be search screen, PDF, placing in there. And then again, search screen PDF would just be placed in this area. Last but not least, it would be the search screen results. And that would be the flat screen and then I'll, I'll, the same file here. Okay. Yep, you can find a Photoshop mock-up. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday. Um, it's always good to kind of plan ahead of for that though because you have to find it, uh, a ratio similar to that uh, to what you already designed. Now, we talked about that yesterday. We actually, I showed you how to do a mock-up and that was based on, I believe, I think Beth found a mock-up. Was it you, Beth, that brought that mock-up in? So let me show you if you have a, a mock-up that you want to place in here. Yes. Um, let, so let me just delete this. And I'm going to go ahead and place that mock-up that I did yesterday. And this is different than what's provided. Let me get a little bit bigger here. And I did that through Photoshop yesterday. So if you missed that, you can definitely review that. Now it's up to you on how you want to rearrange this, rearrange or arrange. Like you can have, um, if, if it makes sense, you can kind of rearrange this for purposes of presentation, obviously. Just keep it consistent. So let's say you wanted this a little bit bigger. You could pull everything down a little bit. I can get a little bit bigger here. Oh, that's a lot bigger. It's not too much bigger, but you know, at least you can see it. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think there's. Um, I don't think you're stuck to the the overall size of this either. So if you needed to, I wouldn't go like extreme, but let's say you wanted to make it more square so it fit, fits your size a little bit better. Um, you could definitely do that too. Like uh, let's say, let's just do like 11 by 11. <clears throat> I'd have to obviously re configure everything for centering it, but this is more of a square presentation. And then that way you can um, kind of get things a little bigger than what you had. 
Just make sure you have enough space in between the, you know, your, your information and your examples. So it's not all crowded. Let me pull this just a little bit in here. Yep, that's the mock-up. Thank you for that, for this screen. So if you wanted to use this screen, Beth provided that link there and you can use that screen. And like I said yesterday, I went to show you how to, how I, um, Oh, this changed how I, uh, why did this change here? That's weird. How I, how, how I use that PSD mockup, this actually changed a little bit. That's why everything got kind of weird. So now we can get this a little bit bigger. You could do something like that too. Just keep it consistent. You know, if you're doing it this way, you want every page to look the same. Okay, I'm gonna go back, 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 because we're gonna backtrack to the simple mock-up that we have. But if you want to use that screen that's in there, go for it. If you know it fits your overall screen size. Any questions about that? And it's a nice presentation because you can uh, show everything. And what's nice about if you if you end up doing this for your assignment four, your assessment four will go much quicker because now all you have to do is add your interactive qualities to it. Buttons. Okay. All right. Yeah, sometimes it's a little crazy because um, there's so many PSD mockups out there, especially for um, kiosks, but not all of them are free. And sometimes they'll say they're free and you'll get into it and then another page will pop up and then it'll make you, you know, who knows, be a member of something and then you have to donate money or whatever. So, <laughs> and then don't forget under your, um, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, which mine is installing something, so I can't show you right now. Um, your Adobe Creative Cloud, there's free templates in there too. Um, I believe it's under, oh, I was just showing, and I can't show you here because it's up up updating currently uh, one of my software packages. So, um, but in there, it should be under like files or something. Uh, there should be PSD mockups that you can do a search for and that they're free. They were ping mockups. Yeah, some of them are like old school, like flat ping files or JPEGs that you actually have to like, almost like what you're doing here where you're placing it in, yeah. Well, the word mockup is loosely, um, loosely given to stationary images like flat images and also PSD mockups are, uh, what they name files that have layers in them and smart objects that you can actually uh, go in and transpose your, your objects within or labels within it. So it's the wording that's kind of more vague as the mock-up. Because both are mock-ups, it's just how you go about it, if that makes sense. See, we used to, back in my day, when I had to do all kinds of mock-ups, it was the old school method where you would just get, you know, one, flat file and then you would have to do all the effects yourself all those layers that you see in the psd mock-up yep <coughs> yep so i'm dating myself here but yeah that's the old school way so in the psd mock-ups when they came about it was like wow this is great you know for certain things that you didn't have to to spend all this time you know creating yourself yep yeah, you can actually make a living off of creating those files, those PSD mockups. You know, as far as selling them. You just create them and, and have the file ready and charge people to download them. You know, kind of how they do it now on websites. So it's kind of crazy. But anyway. 
So yeah, so this would be probably, I would say probably easier when once you get to assessment four, because assessment four, you're gonna be placing it into this mock-up. So you can you can create those interactive buttons. So you're kind of, you know, um, making it an easier step from assignment four to assessment four. I apologize, I probably should have showed you this yesterday and I got so involved with showing you uh, the separate files as separate PDFs. So I, I'm sorry for any confusion and I hope that's clear to you now um, using this template. Okay, so the interactive part of this, uh, let me go back to the instructions here. Uh, where are we going? Oh, there we go. See somebody's beautiful face right there. Okay, so um, we are going to make these interactive, and I, it's just basically um, going to. There, it's not going to be an actual working website. Okay, hold on one second. Beth said, "If we choose not to use the one provided, can we just set up a four-page interactive?" Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, so you would basically do what we did yesterday and just um, do the extra steps that I'm showing you here. Yep. So we're just gonna add buttons to your um, screen so that it's interactive. Okay, this is assignment. Okay, I'm in the wrong thing here, hold on. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay. So let's see. So title and mock-up of kiosk with welcome screen, presentation of your screens with interactive buttons. Okay. Um, so the interactive buttons, this is kind of going to be interesting because like I said, it's not actually going to be, oh, go back to my screen here. Have any of you ever worked with interactive PDFs before? I'm just curious if you've ever. I know I teach another, I taught another class actually creating an interactive magazine. Okay, so you're not real, some of you maybe, okay. So basically it's just adding buttons and directing the user to certain pages. Um, and how you would do that in your InDesign file, go under window, here let me share my desktop so you can see my actual like everything that I'm clicking on, you can't see right now until I share my desktop. So let me share my desktop here. Okay, there we go. Did somebody say something here? Let me get my chat. Wireframe XD. Okay. Um, you know what? I haven't worked in XD, so I'm not sure. That's probably pretty similar. I know you can make your own. Okay. Yeah. I've heard, yeah, I've heard it is nice. I should, I definitely need to do a training on that. Okay, so go under window, and what you're gonna do is go under interactive, and this is basically where all your interactive um, buttons and uh, you know assets are. And what we're gonna look at is buttons and forms for our um, kiosk. Let's go ahead and open that. Um, I just want to show you something real quick here. There's actually sample buttons and forms under the right uh, asset button on the top of the right side of your panel here. So when, once the buttons and forms panel comes up, if you click on this right hand side, it says sample buttons and forms. Go ahead and open that up and you'll see kind of pre-made buttons and maybe forms that are already created. Now you can make them by scratch in InDesign or you can use, you know, these preset buttons as well. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. But basically what these are is just kind of, and it's almost like when I'm zooming in here. Yeah, isn't that cool? If you click on, let me click on my, my home screen, it's not doing it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a shape. And this shape is just going to be from my rectangle tool here. 
And I'm going to put that shape right over my home screen or my home button. And uh, I'm going to go over to my buttons and forms and I'm going to check button with that selected. And I'm going to put a no fill or a no stroke on it. So it's like a clear button here. Let me see. Where's my select these colors, swatches? Because I don't really want it to have a line, just want it to be a button. So no fill, no stroke, just a square right over the button. Then I choose button up here. You can name the button. So it kind of defaults the name. I'm going to put home. And this is basically the name of your button. So you'll want to name each of these what they are. And then right here on the event is basically how you how you interact with that. So this can um, can activate on a release or a tap of your uh, selection, a click on one click, a rollover, on roll off, on focus PDF, on blur PDF. So there's different, um, different options here. I'm just gonna keep it at release or tap. And then um, the action that you can take would be, you know, you would add this plus sign so that you can go down here. And this would be the PDF um, section here. Somebody's at my door, sorry guys. Okay, I thought they were gonna read my doorbell. Uh, the PDF is basically what we're looking at here. These are all the things that are available. Um, you know, when you create your interactive PDF, this is what will be available. So you can go to clear form, go to next view, go to previous view, open file, print form, submit form view, zoom. If this was an actual kiosk, I would definitely have to say that you would save it out as a, a different file setting. So um, you can create the button in a different way too to kind of work around this option where you, you can have an uh, interactive PDF and then this would go to a specific page. Um, I've done that before and I can't remember how I did that. Show buttons in forms. I'm trying to think because I actually did this on a magazine the last class that I taught. And we created this as an interactive PDF, but we used, we did it in a workaround. And I can't remember how I did that. But anyway, um, it was a little different because uh, it was a magazine. So it went to a specific page. See, what we're dealing with here is, uh, okay, the home button, where will it take you to? Now, you could take it to this page, right? Because this is the second page. Um, so that's pretty much what we're working with for this. It's not actually an, a working kiosk. So with that being said, um, I would say in this regards, I would say go to um, EPUB only. I'm trying to think how I would do this because I want to go to a, a specific page. So I would originally want to say go to destination and it would be page two, but this may not work. I'm going to do this and see if it actually works. It may not work. Let me see. I'm going to go to page two. So go to destination. Um, like I said, there is a workaround here and uh, I might just find it now that I'm doing this. Yeah, see inherit and zoom is not even showing this um, destination that I want to go to page two. <laughs> See, what I want to do is I want to be able to uh, click on map and go to instead of next page. Oh, actually, this would go to the next page. Let's see, search would go to last page. Oh, I see how I did this. Okay. So typically, in a, if I were actually working on this and I was just showing screens, um, Yeah, because this gifts, where did I have this going to the last page? Okay. I was, I was just kind of seeing how I did this. The home screen, obviously you're on the home screen, so you don't really need to create a button for that, right? Unless you have the same navigation bar on every screen. So I would just go ahead and delete that for your, uh, your overall home screen. Start out with your map, 
go ahead and make your button like I just told you. Uh, name it as such on a click or on release or tap. You can add an action. And I would say just go to, um, go to next view because that'll go to the next page. Now everything down here is just how the button will look it once you do click on it. We're just gonna say normal for that, that's fine. PDF options, you could just leave that as is. And having it printable is just so, um, you know, if you were to want to print this out, even as an interactive PDF, it still would be printable. That's just basically what that means. Okay, so map would be to next view, and the next view would be this page. Okay, so then search would be the last page. So you would just create a button, name it search, on release or tap, add an action, and I'm just gonna go to last page for this. Everything else looks good. Oops. So you would create the buttons how I showed you. These are already in here. So let me show you real quick here how I would do that again. So I take the square tool, go ahead and put a little square over top of that button. And like I said, you can take off the stroke color so it's not visible at all. No stroke, no fill. Go over to buttons and forms, create a button. Name that button, so I would name this contact, on release or tap. I'm gonna say go to last page. And then there you go, that's how you create it. So um, one, two, three, four, five, I have five. And because mine have different, you know, I don't have the departments for this. Um, you, you might have the departments. Um, so you might not have six buttons is what I'm saying. So as long as you're kind of directing it to, to either the next page or the last page, that's all I'm looking for. So that I know that you know how to create buttons. That's pretty much what I'm looking for. So I should be able to go into your file, I'm sorry, your PDF and click on these and go to a specific page. What's kind of tricky about this is, um, like for instance, this screen here, this is on page three. Let me see, is it page three? One, two, three, four. So it's not quite the last page. So if I were doing a search button, which do I have a search button up here? Yeah, I would want this to be directed to um, page three, but I, I don't know if I can do that through an interactive PDF. Let me see if I can actually, let me see here, delete that. Let's search on the laser tab, let me delete that. I'm gonna go to a destination. Yeah, see I can't put in page three here for some reason. It's not letting me because it's, uh, Hmm. It's not letting me. So what I would say, how did I work around that before? Let me see something real quick. Did I do a, hold on, let me, let me try something here real quick. The bookmark is just a way for you to get to, yeah, like um, like highlight a section. Say like if you were, if you had a magazine of t-shirts and pants and coats, you could bookmark the coats together to go to that grouping very easily into that. Yeah, there is a workaround. I'm trying to think of what I did. Um, wait, hold on, let me see. Interactive. Is that hyperlinks? Oh, no.
give me one second here. I might figure it out. Um, basically, see where this destination list down here? This should show me the pages uh, that I would want to go to. So if this was working, and I have to figure out what's going on here because I think I'm doing it. I have, there is a workaround for this. This would not be grayed out. I would be able to choose page three. Um, I can't remember exactly what I did. It's driving me crazy. Oh, you know what? I think it was, um, maybe it was because it was a PDF initially. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what I did. That was in the magazine. Um, I was making the interactive magazine for another class and we were creating URL buttons and regular buttons. And then there was something else that wasn't working as an interactive PDF, you know, when you created an interactive PDF. So, yeah, I worked with it was for the magazine also. Yeah, there was a workaround. And for some reason, it's like, let me see here. If, PDF only button. I wonder if it's because it is a button. Radio button, this button, combo button, check button. No, I didn't use that either. It's a regular button. Yep. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's like eluding me right now. But um, pretty much, if you want any of the buttons to work in an interactive PDF, this is pretty much. Uh, all the options that you have here. That's what I was thinking, the text field. But, you know, I did that text field. And uh, let's see, go to destination. It's not giving me an option to change the destination here. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. No, no, you're good. Yeah, it's one of those things that it's so funny because I, when I just taught, I just taught this class, uh, that magazine class, the making the interactive PDF, and it it eluded me at the time, and then it popped right into my head right whenever I was like, oh yeah, I remember what I did, um, and now it's eluding me right now. It's uh, it's driving me crazy. What I can't remember what I did. Let me see, interactive, animation, bookmarks, links, media, object states, let's see. Yeah, I was thinking that if, you know, if it would pop into my head um, while I'm doing this here, but it's not interactive, hyperlinks, animation, page transitions. Yeah, I don't, you know. Here we go. Anyway, so I think what we're gonna do, because until I get it actually in my head how I worked around that, um, make the, the location map go to the next page. So go to next view, how I showed you. Just make the search button go to, let's see, go to the next form, previous form. Will this go to the last page? Will let me do that? No, we'll see if that actually works. Last page, and we'll just do the same for these. Buttons that I just created here. So this is go to last page, go to last page. So really the only next page would be your search button, unless you had a search result button. Mm-hmm. Oh, gifts. Yeah, I could have that. That's going to the last page. Um, go ahead and save it. Let me go ahead and save this in my desktop here. Once you're done with that, you don't have to worry about making this interactive, the mock-up itself. You can actually add buttons here on your nav screen. Um, if you want to do that. And that's just kind of the same thing where you're taking that um, 
rectangle box. Or if you did this, and this is in a flat file, say if you're, well, that's, I was gonna say, that's probably not what you're gonna do. Cause I was gonna say, if you did it in InDesign and then just plopped it in here, you can make a, a text field. But that's usually, that's probably not what you did if you're placing this in here. So I would just do a rectangle, go over the whole wor word and create a button this way. So you just go type button, the same thing I showed you before. And we'll name this search on release or tap. And we'll just go to the last page. Home screen, um, you can go to the first page on that, save it as home screen. I don't think I had one over here. Location map. So as long as I'm clicking on them and seeing that you're applying those buttons, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Like the, the on release, the tap, you're renaming them, you're giving them a next page or the last page, previous page, actions. Um, previous page, we'll get a previous page for that one, see how that works. And save that. You can even do, if you wanted to, like over the logo, make a button to go to the first page. Kind of like a home button. And you can also set your um, squares over top of your um, arrows. So you can go to like a back button would be on click, on release, go to previous page. For the left arrow, and then the right arrow would be the next page. You would make it um, a button, you would name it forward button. Go to next page. Okay. And then you would just repeat that you know, in each of your screens here for anything that you created above. Does that make sense? And you can copy and paste those over, you know, if you created it here and you just wanted to copy and paste that over. You could do that too. Let me see if I can do that easily here. I have two squares there. Make sure you're grabbing the right boxes. There we go. So this one didn't have any of them, but here are all my boxes from my previous screen. Yep, yep, yep. It's not going to be um, super like, you know, as far as going to a specific location, map screen might be the hardest one because that's a certain page on here. But as long as I'm seeing you use creating the buttons for a previous or next screen, that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking for there. When you're done, um, you would have to save it out, obviously, as your InDesign file. And then right before you're ready to export, um, just kind of notice that you do this a little bit differently with an interactive PDF. So what you would do is you would go ahead and export. And in your export, you have these options, you know, PDF print is what you would do if it didn't have any interactive buttons, but we do have interactive buttons. We want to be able to uh, press and have them interact. So we're gonna choose interactive PDF. I'm gonna save that out. All pages. I have this as spreads, but I don't think I need them as spreads, but all pages. Um, embed page in, let me see if this is all open and full screen, fit page, viewing, compression, advanced, everything else looks good. Okay, so export. Okay, and once you export, let me hide this. 
Let me make sure I have the right PDF open here. I have a whole bunch of PDFs. Open up your PDF and then test it out. Okay, so this is page one. Go to page two and just see if these, oh, I don't think I had a button on the home screen, but it did take me somewhere. Go ahead and click on, that, that shouldn't have worked for some reason, but the map, I must have had something in there I was hidden that I didn't delete. The map button should take me to the next screen. Yeah, this screen. The only thing I would probably change is how, when you go to the next screen, how it views. Um, so we may, what I mean by that is when I click on search, you'll see, oh, it views fine, so that's good. Goes to my search screen. Okay, and then contact should go to the last screen too. And hours last screen, gifts last screen. Yay, it worked, yep. This should go to the home screen, there we go. Well, this went to the very first page. So I probably would reset that to go to the second page. So I would reset that. Let's see if the previous button works. Oh, skipped way ahead here, hold on. Oh, I don't know why that's doing that. Let's see if the next button works. Yeah, that works. Yeah, it's like skipping too, I'm not sure why, that's weird. Um, let's see if these work, home screen. Yeah, it's going to page number one. Location map, that's not really working either. Search. Some of them need to be fixed. So if you notice some things need to be fixed, go back to your InDesign. But for the most part, you can see that they actually work. They're just needing to be revised a little bit. So I shouldn't have a home screen button. Let me take that off. My map button was fine, right? I went to the right page, it was my it was my home button, this one, that took me to the very first page and should have taken me to the second page. But I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do that because it says to the first page. Let's delete that and go to, previous page. Because that'll take me to my home page. Now this one will be the tricky one. I don't think I, do I have one here? Yeah. Because if I go to the previous page, it's not gonna be the home page. That's where it's a little tricky. Go to first page, next page, previous page. See, this is where it would be nice to go to a destination and actually put the page number in here. But for some reason, I'm not able to. I have to figure that out. So uh, I'll just set it to the first page. That's fine if you guys do that too until I figure this out. My apologies. I haven't, let's see here, go to first page. We'll just go to first page for that. First page for this one too. And then these were skipping. So I'm just wondering if do I have two boxes in there. Let me see if I have two. No. Why is this skipping two pages? On release or tap back button three. Yeah, that should be fine. I don't know why that was having issues there. Go to previous page. On release or tap. Those should work. Huh. I thought maybe I had two buttons in there, but it doesn't look like it. So that should have worked. It was skipping two pages previous and it shouldn't have been. I'm not sure what was going on there. Pack button, one click, one click. Maybe I'll just put on release or tap. Maybe that'll just work better. Back button, that's already on that, so.
or maybe it should be on click. Nope, now it's on click again. That's really weird. Since I changed it. Strange things going on. Okay, that one's fine. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this out again, just like export it out as an interactive PDF. This time I'm gonna name this new just so it, I don't have any issues with it. Um, exporting out over top of the older one. And this is the older one here. Yep, they never work when I want them to. Is this the new one or the old one? Let me make sure I open up the new one here. Does anybody have any questions though in regards to what I just showed you? Here's a new one. Okay. Don't ask me a new one. Yep, this is a new one. Okay. So let me see. That shouldn't be a button anymore. Good. Um, this is still going at 100% for some reason. It's kind of annoying. It's going to the right page. It's just blowing it up a little bit bigger. Yeah, see so when I go to map. There's a way you can change that too. Let's go to search. There we go. Let's go to home. That's going to take you to the first page because I can't quite get you to the second page. Uh, contact. Good. Everything else is working. Let's check the back page. That looks like, oh, it's skipping still. Why is that doing that? It's really weird. Just be my file because I've been working with this file uh, for several demos. So I'm wondering if I have a hidden button underneath there. If you come into the same issue, let me know. That back button is going like two pages where it shouldn't be. Yours might be fine because I'm, like I said, I'm using an older working file that I've been using over and over again. So it might just be something weird going on with my file. Search button, there we go. So just try to make your buttons on your homepage go to a specific page, uh, next or previous, and then a navigation bar go to next or previous as well, or go to the next page or whatever the page number, or previous page that you have. Um, if you have your logo, you might want to have it go to the first page or the home page, and then the previous and forward um, arrow buttons. If you have any signifiers like that, you can definitely do what I just did. All right, so when, when you save this, let me see how big this file is here. Let's see. Yeah, it's not real big. It's 352 kilobytes, so that would be no big deal. But once you save this and it's an interactive PDF, this is what you're going to submit for your assessment for. So you should have these four pages with your, um, five pages with your interactive buttons included. Any questions about that? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to review the LinkedIn Learning uh, Create Button profile. So maybe there's something in there that's a workaround that I'm kind of not hitting upon that, you know, we can definitely fix in regards to going to a specific page for a button for your interactive PDF. Now that they've switched to Lin Linda, from Linda to LinkedIn, some of those tutorials I haven't quite gotten to. So it would be kind of interesting to, uh, I will definitely look at that. Um, I did want to go over another thing, which is back, if we rewind, on your assignment for we didn't quite get to, and that was your um, exporting out for Behance. So at the very bottom here, it tells you that you need to not only submit a PDF for your final evaluation, 
but you also need to um, upload a PDF. It says upload a PDF to your Behance portfolio site and copy and paste the links in, in the comments. Now you're going to quickly find that if you try to upload a PDF, it's not going to let you. So this is incorrect in here. Um, it, it will accept, I believe, ping and JPEG files. Yep. So uh, just kind of a heads up there. You know what? I don't know. And I will definitely bring that to, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely make a ticket for that because some of the things in here, if we find that there's uh, miscommunication in here, we definitely have to report that. So I'll be doing that. Um, but that should say JPEG or ping. I think what it should have said was you're going to be uploading your final PDF as an as a JPEG or ping for your Behance. There's like left out information there. All right, so I showed you yesterday how to export as your uh, out as a ping and a JPEG. Did you guys want me to go over that again? Or are you guys good with that? Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that, Karen. <laughs> okay, so um, when we were, okay, I'm gonna actually show you this in an, a different way than yesterday, but this is good because we didn't talk about the InDesign part. So say you're just gonna do your InDesign, uh, layouts as shown here for your Behance. Okay, so let's say you decide, okay, I'm just gonna use this for my Behance. And that's fine, instead of what I showed yesterday, which was the four and four, showing separately each of your screens and your mockups. You can do this too. So you would, this is kind of easy to do. So you would just go up to, in InDesign, go up to File, and you, you would just go to Export. And I would just save it out as a JPEG. Save it to your desktop or wherever folder that you know that they're gonna go to and hit Save. Um, all your pages should be selected, so select all. You don't really need spreads, it's not in a spread. Um, maximum quality is good. Baseline's fine. 72 dots or pixels per inch should be what it should be at, and RGB is fine. Everything else down here is good. Uh, checked for anti-alias, bleed settings, we don't really have that. And then, I mean, it's up to you if you want to embed your color. That's kind of not really important, but go ahead and export. And it's gonna export all five pages. And I'll show you what it looks like on my desktop here. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this. Let me break this out. Here's one JPEG. Here's two, page two. Here's page three. And this just kind of placed it right here on my, on my desktop because I told it to. Now, remember how I said before, create a folder um, and put all of your JPEGs in there. And I told you to create a Behance folder. So create a Behance folder. Once you export all those out, go ahead and pull that into your Behance folder so you'll have all of those ready to go. A PDF in here by accident. Let's go ahead and throw that in PDF, there we go. And so we have all of them in here. We have page one, two, three, four. All right, then log on to your Behance. Behance is behance.net. And it might look a little different than mine because I have tons of stuff on mine. But you should have a membership already and um, maybe have downloaded or uploaded stuff before. So I'll just go over it again. So once you get to your profile, go ahead and create a project. And there's two ways you can do it. You can go over here on the um, button navigation bar and say upload files or hit files here and it's the same thing. Go to your folder again, very easy once you have all your folder items in there. Select all of your files that you want to upload. So I'm just going to do a shift select. All, um, are all my files in here? Let me see, one, two, three, four. Hmm. 
My search bar is it in my search. Uh, yeah, I missed one. Why did I miss that one? Hold on. Yeah, I must have missed it in my uh, folder here. Hold on. Trying to be organized, right? There it is. Let's go back and do that again. Okay, B hands. There we go. Five pages. And shift select, open. That should plop them all in here. Ready to go. That looks good. Um, if you need to rearrange them, you can, you know, select the order. You can edit this little pencil tool here allows you to either reorder your project. If you click on it, you can add a caption, replace image, or delete image. Um, so this is kind of how it should look. When you're ready to go, just click save. Oh yeah, the PDF. Yeah, I grabbed that PDF. You're right. You got me. And then hit continue, not save. Sorry. Um, you can upload an image for your cover and it's completely up to you. I'm just going to do this real quick. Just the cover image. Okay, this is where it gets weird. Let me see if I can actually grab the home screen then. This has to be a certain size and I think this is really small. So let me see if I grab just the JPEG here. Yeah, it's like a quirky thing that happens. Sometimes it, it does this and okay. So uh, with that being said, let me go back to my InDesign. <laughs> And I'm just gonna do a screenshot of just this part here real quick. I just did a shift command for, sometimes this gives me issues, sometimes it doesn't. With that whole cover shot, ish, you know, problem and error message. And I just did this screenshot. Let's see if that will actually accept it. It's looking for a pretty, now small, let's cancel that here. Let's see if I put in the title DES240. Um, target your screens. Yeah, it's not allowing me to do that. Mm -hmm. Cover, it should automatically give me a cover. It's really weird. Okay, let me pull this one in real quick. Nope. Let me delete this. Like I said, this happens every once in a while. It's a really odd thing. It's tiny, yeah. So the, but you know, I have done this where um, I've had it down this low and it still doesn't take it. Let me open up Photoshop here. And let me pull in the one JPEG cover. <laughs> and this is set at let's see, pixels 792, 612. Minimum size 792, 612. Okay. 
It's really weird. Let's do a little bigger then. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. And I'm just going to name this cover image for Behance JPEG. Okay, let's see if that works. This should work. If not, something weird is happening. There we go. So what I did was I just made sure it was um, bigger than 808 pixels by 632. When an image I want to use is too small, I copy it and then create a new file that is the size. Okay. Yeah, so basically it was too small for that area. So just um, going into Photoshop and making it bigger than 808 by 632. So I made it, um, I didn't see the 808, but the, the next number was over 600, so it was 700. So it would just go ahead and go back to Photoshop, pull in that cover image, and just make sure image go to image size, make that 700, and then whatever this changes to proportionately, which mine's 906. Save it out as a cover image JPEG. That's how you get around that. It's just a weird, it's a weird thing. Just because it's a small image that we're uploading, all, smaller images. Yep, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna hit crop because I kind of zoomed in a little bit. Crop and continue. And then you can create your fields. So, um, you know, we are, we're, we're doing information design. I don't know if that's actually a topic here. Let's see, information, architecture, interaction design. Let's select that. I think you can only do three. So graphic design and then what else we got? Yeah, user experience. Yep, let's select that and hit done. Those are just like key creative fields. Um, tools used, obviously, I'm just going to put the Adobe Creative Suite. Unspecified, done. Everything else you could just leave as such and then hit publish. And you should be able to see your uh, published work. Uh, the important step here is that once you hit publish, it's going to give you a link. This is the link that you're going to copy and you're going to email your FPA and CC, so carbon copy me on that email, and paste this link in. And say to your FPA who you are, that you are working on a um, assignment four for DES 240, so that they know what you're talking about, why you're sending this email, and say, um, I just wanted, can you please review this? Um, Oh, okay. No, you don't get the word. You know what? That's fine. Just put it, you know how you submit your assessment for through Canvas? Just paste that little link in there for me. Like the little message area. So attach your PDF and then just paste in your little URL in that message area before you submit it. Oh, okay. Or you can send two emails. That's fine. Um, I didn't think about that. That's weird that Canvas doesn't have that, but you may have me as your FPA, and if that's the case, then that's simple and easy. You know, you could just send it to me, obviously. Um, oh, okay. Yep. But I would be fine if you just submit it, like, in your... There you go up here. Let's see if I can actually try to submit for this. Um, you have to do it in student view here. Um, <laughs> Let me see if I can try to show you guys how to submit this, but oh, here's student view. Okay. 
hold on a second. Let me go back to assessment four here. You guys can't see what I'm doing. Okay, now, now you can see what I, this is what you guys see. This is how I see what you see. Okay, hold on, Sarah, I can't message. We are in contact a couple months. Okay, good. Uh, I can't message my family unless I go through an old email because it says I can't find her, so I go through an old email. Who's your FPA, Sarah? It's Kim Grable. Oh, okay. Uh, but for some reason, when I type it in, it says that uh, the recipient is an invalid recipient. Oh, okay. so I took a class with Shell Redfern and she CC'd her. So I just go back through that email. I have it starred and uh, then I'll type the email up and submit it. And then I take a screenshot of the timestamp and everything on it. Do you go through the GAC when you do that? Huh? Do you go through the GAC when you do that? The graphic? Um... I do it through the school's inbox. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. And Sarah Creek said it says that she's an invalid recipient. You must not be, she must know. not have you as one of her contacts. So see if that, did you hear back from, uh, who did you email? Well, I've talked to my supervisor. Uh, I, Shelby at Redfern, she was a teacher for one of my past classes and I told her I couldn't get through to her because it was telling me that she was an invalid recipient and so I told her uh I was like well is there any way you can cc her and have her get in touch with me you know and then I can reply to her email and you know so I basically was replied to the old email and just tell her the new class I'm in and was that we, recent? was that recently Sarah or was that a while ago uh, it's been every class. Really? Yeah. Since okay. the beginning, I have not been able to message her since we started putting stuff on the hands. You can't go in. Can you go in the GAC and message her? I don't even know what that is. Start community. I'm just writing a note here. Uh, talk to Sean Childers Gray, you know. And he's talked to her. My student advisors talk to her, you know, and they let her know, hey, she's trying to get in hold, get in touch with you. And I have emailed her through Google okay. uh, for, for the Gmail, but it tends to be she doesn't get back to me. So yeah. I never really hear anything from her one way or the other, except this yeah. last time, you know, I had an issue with grades and asked them to look at it and I couldn't really get anybody to do it so I just okay like, well, Sarah, I, will, I will be in touch with them about that we're going to be having a meeting uh tomorrow so I'll definitely bring that up yeah I've been in that last class it ended up making me get a B and I don't think my some of my stuff was graded very fairly I felt like I was kind of being picked on a little bit honestly but because uh, my student advisor looked at all my schoolwork and pretty much said that it looked really awesome and she couldn't see where they were having the issue. He was having the issue, you know. Okay. But he was supposed to get in touch with me so I could get it uh, straightened out mm -hmm. so that I could keep my president. Because I am working my booty off trying to keep the straight A's, you know. I've made yeah. honor roll then president's list, and I wanted to try to keep the president's list, you know? Yeah. It's like one of my personal goals. Definitely. Well, I will bring that up to, to everyone tomorrow in the meeting, and I'll hopefully get that pushed forward. Deanne, who is your, do you know who your FPA is? Carly, okay. All right, I'll talk to both of them and hopefully we'll get to a resolution here. Maybe they, maybe they just don't, maybe they didn't get the emails, I'm not quite sure. All right, hold on a minute. Katie? 
Look at you now, everybody's chiming in here. Katie. Wah. All right, so I'll definitely bring that up in meeting tomorrow. All right. And hopefully we will, okay, Katie, yours is Pia, okay. Yeah, I will definitely bring that up and just see what's going on and say, hey, listen, I have some students in my, my current class and they, uh, they've been trying to connect and uh, it hasn't been successful. So maybe we'll get some, the ball rolling here. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I mean, that definitely speak up because that's, that's I mean, we, I don't know what's going on. So I, I will help guide you as much as I can. So just yeah. be could be something weird too within Canvas, you know, and that we just need to figure it out. So you're yeah. welcome, Tab. Yeah, so, okay, so going back to your submissions here. Here, hold on one second. Because uh, I have, let's see, I have your view now. See, it. this is what I see. This is what you guys see. So you would go to submit your assignment and, um, so that you don't have to worry about CCing through Canvas because you can't do it apparently, and I didn't know that. Um, go ahead and select your file to submit. And then in the comments area here, just go ahead and paste your URL. Yeah, Jason's great. Mm -hmm. So that's then just submit it. And then that way I get your URL either way. And we don't have to worry about CCing. So you don't have to worry about duplicate emails and all that crazy stuff. So if you have me as your FPA, you don't even have to worry about emailing. You just go ahead and paste your, your URL in there and say, hey, I'm, I'm, you're my FPA. Um, so, so that you're not doing double work. Does that make sense? All right, uh, let's see here. Let me go back to, oh, I see somebody getting lobbins. <laughs> uh -huh. That makes me miss my little girl. That's great. Yeah, she's a big part. Aw, very cute. Yeah. <laughs> okay, does, uh, I'm pretty much done with everything, uh, kind of going over everything, but I want to open this up for you guys um, to have you guys have the opportunity to, to ask any questions, if you want me to go over anything additionally, or if you want to share your work. So we'll just kind of open it up to you guys at this point. Yeah, a lot of people in here, which is great to see. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sounds like you're getting sick too. You know what? I have had this for like the past three weeks. Yeah. It's like the never ending head cold. <laughs> yeah. Beth, you haven't started on yours yet? Okay. So for those of you who are just starting, you know, just, you know, if you have any questions, cause it's only Tuesday. Um, if you are running into issues, if you need extra help, just reach out to me. Uh, you know, if we're not in lecture now, obviously I, you don't have stuff to show, then, you know, email me, contact me, and I will help guide you through what you need to do. Yep. You got it. <laughs> but does anybody have anything to share or did you want me to go over anything or is everybody good? Good. <laughs> yep. Are you watching the video? Like I said, I'm sorry for any confusion from assignment four to assessment four. I can see how that can be confusing. If you just want to show your, your uh, mock-up with your screen, as I just showed today for assignment four as well, you can do that. Okay. Yep. Everybody's multitasking, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay well if any you know you're free to go for those of you who are good to go um and uh, for those of you who need extra help or whatever just hang in here 
and we'll see if uh, anybody else needs some help and going forward. But I do want to tell you guys, thank you so much for a great class. This, these two sections, I have two sections of this class, has been very successful the last couple of weeks. So I'm very excited to see all the people, all you guys at a, a great completion rate so far. It gives me hope. So I want to see you guys end strong. And I want, I want to say, hey, I had two sections of this class and everybody passed. Like, how awesome would that be? So make me proud. <laughs> well, I'm sorry my work's been late. I've been working really hard trying to get it in and make sure that I get it in when I say I'm going to get it in. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, life is, life happens. Yeah. Especially yeah. The little ones. <laughs> yeah. Katie, I hear you. I was a, uh, you know, I'm working. I was a work at home mom. My my daughter started kindergarten, so that's kind of yeah. Yeah, there. one in kindergarten, one in second, and then this little monkey will be in pre K next year. Yeah, there you go. You'll have a little bit of a break. I want to do it myself after that because doing my schoolwork will not be the same because I want to have a little kid come and ask me for stuff constantly. Yep, it makes a world of difference for sure. Makes the strong people though, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks, Katie. Thank you, Beth. And you're welcome, Karen. Sorry, I'm just see, an answering the chat here. Beth, thank you so much. Yes, everybody finished strong. And um, I will be posting my contact information, too, before the, the end of this class so you guys can keep in touch with me. And, um, you know, even if you don't have me in future classes, we can still stay in touch and network together. So. Okay, great. All right, guys, for anybody who wants to stick around, go ahead. If anybody else wants to leave, you're free to leave. And uh, thank you for a great class. It was, it was great to have all of you. So basically all you're looking for on the week three assignment is like a kind of a layout. Yes, so the week three assignment three is more of a strategy plan. So you can have that hand drawn or you know, just real kind of a, a looser rendition of your, of a final presentation. I think she's trying to crack you up. <laughs> your face. She's sitting there sticking her tongue in and out. Oh, oh, I see her now. I actually had that window shut. That's why I couldn't see her. She's going. <laughs> no, she's all shy. <laughs> oh, I don't think, oh. <laughs> I don't think I realized she was on the camera <laughs> until I pointed it out. That's funny. <laughs> All right. So just basic, a basic layout and be able to, like, make it clear on how to get from page to page, like you were saying. Yes. So, like, and I showed, uh, I showed examples. Did you watch the lecture from that? No, I actually sick. Okay. <clears throat> And I was planning on doing that today, and I realized, I remembered that the live session for this week was going, so I was like, well, I'll watch that, and then I'll watch the other one, and then I have time yeah. on assignment to either today, later today or in the morning tomorrow, you know? Okay, yeah, so I believe I gave you a template for assignment three as well to help you time-wise with that. So you just need to go, I think I posted it in announcements. So if you, if you go to um, announcements, I believe uh, week three, let me go back and see if I can find it here. That might help you. I'm going to leave student view here real quick. Yeah, that little girl, she's just completely sweet and she gets like everybody attached to her. <laughs> it's like wow child I don't know how you do it you just got this magnetism that draws everybody to you that's cute yeah they're cute when they're that age oh but they can be quite ornery and stubborn oh yeah working on the potty training thing with her still she knows exactly what to do but she'll do it it's like one of those things where it'll just happen when it happens you know I'm like, baby, you do realize if you want to go to pre-K with Bubba and go to school with Bubba and Sissy and ride the bus, you got to potty train. <laughs> what 
diaper wearing babies and pre K. They want big kids. Yep. And that's not even working. All the time. My mine didn't start until the end of the second preschool year. So Well, she was going to a daycare and she was doing really good with it. We had her going, you know, and staying dry. But we took her out of the daycare and she started staying home with me and for like the last couple of weeks of the summer and her brother and sister were home and she just completely stopped. Yeah, that's that comes with the changes too, you know. So I told him, I was like, I think they're so used to that consistency. Yeah. And then whenever it changes, it's like, oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Because she wants to go to school really bad. So who knows? Maybe when school year starts up next year, she'll decide all of a sudden, just I don't know where she's done with diapers. She'll be potty on potty wearing big girl panties and starting the first day. Good. Yeah, she'll be good, Mama. Yeah. <laughs> she's very smart. She already knows some of her shapes. She already knows her name's Maddie. Yeah. Okay. Call her monkey or anything. She'll go, I'm Maddie. Aww. I always like to say, you never really see an adult, like, you know, you know they're not going to be in diapers forever. So it's just, you know, a timing thing. Yep. Okay. So here is, I don't have, I thought I had like a template. But I did just share this. So if you go into the, listen to the lecture assignment three, I kind of showed just real loose hand renderings and even, and I say hand renderings, even in uh, Illustrator if you want to do it and just kind of almost like a wireframe. So you know what my design looks like now. This is kind of what I did for assignment three to set that up. Could I use Adobe XD? If you want to, I mean, I'm kind of looking at this as being kind of the brainstorming part of it. So yeah, that's, that's what I would be using it for because it's got the wireframes. So you can yeah. actually create your own mock-up of what the website would look like and then later on fill in colors and all that stuff, you know. Okay, yeah. I mean, if it's, yeah, if it's not too hindering of your creative process, then that's fine. It'd be like... Uh, having the top of the screen uh where it says home and all that uh it, they've got the bars for that they got the boxes where it would be like home okay uh, you know all that it'd make it pretty much just like how you have it right here on this page that you got it on right uh, just the bare bones of it okay you know, that's home. fine yeah the only thing i would say is that i would like to see maybe you sketching out icons a little bit more loosely yeah so you can use the icons, but you can actually create your own in there as well. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So here I am kind of loosely thinking about icons, and then here I am developing them. So on the last page, you can kind of show both if you'd like to. Okay. And then on the home page, that's kind of just showing that's where they will be. That's a looser, you know, what, what, uh, sketch, uh, thumbnail of what that actually be. So it doesn't have to be refined. It's just... Kind of what you're thinking about organizational wise and concept wise. Yeah, it just it just be a sketch. It just look more clean and mm -hmm. fine. Kind of. Yeah, sketch. because this is kind of this one here, and this one's kind of like a wireframe. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's why I'm saying yeah, that definitely would that would work for that. So go for it. All right. Yeah, because I like my stuff to be as neat as possible. So. Yeah, well, especially with like screen design, website design, that's usually the way to go as far as the wireframe is concerned. Just helps you align things and start thinking about grid structure and all that good stuff. You can even prototype it, type it to go to the like the next pages. Okay, cool. If you yeah. don't mind, I'll do it that way because you can set up an interactive PDF as well with, I believe, Adobe XD. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, as long as I'm able to open it, I have not updated my system software. I'm going to do that during the holiday break. So hopefully I'll be able to open that. But if it's a PDF, it sh I should be able to open it up if it's an interactive PDF. Uh, she showed us how to actually publish it, like online, and then just yeah, okay. submit the link. Okay. Yeah, do that. That'd be good. Browser and pull it right up, just like a web page. Yeah. 
So. Yeah, because we actually showed how to do that for that magazine too, how to make it more interactive online. That was the second option you could do. Yeah, I think I actually took that class around when you were doing it. I just had a different teacher than you. Okay. Yeah, I usually te I teach that class a lot, actually. <laughs> if, I a, if you go to my Behance, uh, I actually got a magazine in there that I had to do. Oh, okay. Cool. I've done brochure, all kinds of stuff now. I'm like, wow. Yeah, you got a nice little array of stuff. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, place called Aspect Studios. Uh, comment on one of my things. Very cool. Have you heard of Aspect Studios before? I have. I just uh, I haven't really checked it out. But they were impressed with my work and uh, are following my work, and they appreciated it. So. Very, very cool. That's awesome. Yay. Yeah. Oh that's always God. like so validating you know yeah and that and i actually got a 75 on that project that i uploaded really yeah that's why it, and it was that last class that's why i was saying i don't think he graded my stuff very fairly because uh -huh. if a company is liking it and saying they're impressed with it and he only gave me a 75 on it and sean childers gray helped me with the logo you know hmm so it's like, well, where's the miscommunication at, you know? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's all about. <laughs> actual company comp, like, likes it, but the teacher doesn't. It's like, what in the world? I put all my time and effort into it because he was saying my stuff was too complicated at first. Okay. And then I simplified it up, but he still didn't like it, hmm. you know? So yeah. Like, How do I find the happy medium? So then I come up with a little uh, paint palette with a paintbrush going across it, and it was like, it looked like it was introverted, but it just had pieces cut out of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Using the shape builder tool. Okay. And uh, it had like four colors of paint, and then I done it like a filter on it or an effect where it made it look like it was chalked on, like it was just painted or chalked. Okay. And uh, it was Metropolitan Art Gallery and oh uh, okay i know what which, which project yeah. you're talking about yeah and uh he just he gave me a 75 on it but everybody else that looks at it thinks it looks awesomely amazing you hmm. know I'm like, okay interesting i don't know what to think <laughs> send it like, it send it to me i'd be interested in seeing it all right we'll do all right yeah it's uh it's hard for me to know what the details are but i would like to see it yeah. just to to know what you're talking about yeah, I'll definitely send it to you. Uh, you can attach it through the inbox, right? Through the school canvas. Yeah, as long as you have a, do you have a URL? Uh, I don't, but I could probably give you my Behance URL. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just do that. I have projects on there that I've done. Yeah, just do that. That'll work. That would work. All right. Yep. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get going. Uh, my boyfriend's home for lunch. All right. Well, it's great to see you and your little one. <laughs> Good luck going forward, and uh, we'll be talking. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a great day, Sarah. You too. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.